Welcome back to Off The Rail. This is day one at the UK Open, the latest tour stop on the World Nine Ball Tour. Joining me, the boss, Emily Fraser, and the man who we've just watched win his second match, Chris Mellin. First of all, Chris, you now have the title of the <laughs> easiest eight ball missed ever in nine ball pool. Well, I guess it's another title to the collection. <laughs> no, you know, it's, it, I was so close to the eight ball, I was frightened of double hitting it, and uh, I was under pressure. I mean, Spencer played great to start with. He had me under pressure, and, I just tried to slow the game down a little bit and use my tactical side. Um, I felt that's why I won the match because my tactical side came out and my safety was very good. Um, I had to slow him down because he was playing brilliant. Have you played him before? Because I've not seen much of him, but he looked quite a good cue still there in the match. No, I never played him. I uh, watched him play early. I think he was 6-3 up in one of his matches. Um, just try to get a little you know, edge on how he plays. He played brilliant, to be fair to him. You know, I can't knock him and uh, he's, I think he's got a great future. We were just talking off camera. We were talking about how tight the pockets are. Emily, there's 26 tables. This is the first open event where every table is four inch. Finally, some consistency, right? Uh, obviously, we're across two different table manufacturers, so it's slightly more difficult to have the consistency across tables. You know, I say credit to the manufacturers and the fitters themselves because. At, there's never a complaint now at our tournaments about any tables rolling or anything like that. So we've really got this down to a T. But we've now got the Rasson tables and the diamond tables playing at the four inch corner pockets. No more messing around with these pockets anymore. I know there's jokes online about how we're changing things, but this is how it should be set. And so both you know, brands have come together and said, okay, this is, this is the matchroom rules. And now players will expect these standards when they're coming into an invitational event at the Whirlpool Masters or they're coming to an open event. And I think it's made a big difference today. It's great with the nine on the spot with the break. I just think that the UK Open last year was a, a fantastic event set up wise, but on the tournament side of things, you know, that was the, the one that really sort of gave us the nudge as to changing the break. And yep. because we were seeing those results coming through and we saw there was a problem with the break. We're at a total different tournament now and for the better. Chris, what's it like you've played out there? Obviously, we've just watched how tight are the pockets. What's it done to the game in the sense of last year where it's a bigger pocket? Try and tell the viewers. Well, it's, it's difficult. I mean, obviously, when you're watching at home that, you know, people are going to say, oh, is it the cushion there? But that's the game of nine ball. We've never played on pockets this tight before. And, and believe you me, they are tight for nine ball. I mean, we've got Jack Lazowski playing and he's missing balls and he's one of the best potters in the world. So that tells you everything, really. Um, I felt a little bit under pressure there when I was playing and even when I've got balls down the cushion I'm thinking I need to be really accurate with this and I missed a few um, and, and again I was put under pressure so that's what we want to see, that's what people want to see back home, they want to see twitching, they want to see you know, easy misses, they don't want to see people running out all the time and, and you're going to get more pull now. Well we've seen, we've seen a few in that match, cheers for that. Cheers, for missing. <laughs> no obviously, you, you know, obviously you're one of the best potters that we've ever seen, the best QS, you play all Q sports very highly and like you said when Jack was playing it was like I was just, you know, a top snooker player who cues so good missing balls so that just shows you. Emily, quick word on the arena, fantastic to be back at the Copper Box. Yeah, it's a great setup here and uh, it was funny, Jack said um, earlier, he goes, cool, the pockets are tight. You know, <laughs> when I was watching and a lot of the snooker players comment and say, oh, they're buckets, you know, it'll be easy. And I know there's, uh, people kind of sit on the fence about us bringing snooker players into the tournament. Obviously, we're not trying to steal them away from the tour or yeah. we're not trying to say that, you know, snooker players any bigger than our top pros here. But there's no... Um, you know, we're not frightened to say that Jack Lazowski is a huge Q Sports name. You know, the crowd that gathered around his first match today was incredible. For someone like him with his profile to come and play in this event and to actually walk away and go, wow, these players are real good and I have to really practice hard to even get to their level. That's the respect that this game should be getting. Now, that's, that's what we're trying to achieve by bringing these players in, by tightening the pockets, by making the standards a lot higher. Because, I'm sorry, but 10 years ago, the rules that were set 10 years ago, the players are so much better now. There's a lot more you know, professional competition and there's a lot more tournaments that are happening. The players are getting stronger and they are getting better. So we've set the standards and that's how it should be. People should be tuning in at home and respecting the players, respecting the shots that they're making and going, cool, that's tough. Because th what was happening before, they go, oh, I can make that, I could do that. 
it's not a professional game of people at home thinking they can come in and just jump in at it. So that people like Chris should be getting the respect that he deserves for making the shots at this table. So that's all I want to say on that. But look, the setup's great, and I think the it just seems the players come up to him and go, great venue, great setup, love the staging, uh, the lighting, everything like that. You know, we've set the bar for how these open fields events should be, and on your last match as well we kind of rushed to put that on the tv table obviously you're our highlight reel anyway there's some of the shots that you make we mentioned it on the golden break podcast but it's nice to see players like spencer oliver for example you know chris was saying as watched his earlier match he's a talented player he doesn't quite get any recognition because he doesn't have like the expenses or anything to go and travel to the european open to the us open he should be, you know, looking at it as climbing the rankings, seeing this opportunity. We want to put him on a live stream to give him that experience, to get him out there. Because like Chris said, it was at 3-1 and he was, uh, he was sitting there thinking, oh, God, <laughs> sort of thing. Yeah, I, th I think what you find now, and I'm sure there's a lot of people at home will agree with this, is when you look at the darts, when the PDC was really getting going in, you know, the, the early 90s, late 90s, you know, there was only so many players that were really professional mm. because they were the only ones that were earning money from the from the darts, from the PDC. All of a sudden now, it's very similar with the pool. It's not the prize money what darts is now, not yet. Mm. But what you find now is a lot of the players don't need to work. They can win prize money. There's that many tournaments. So they can put the time in, they can put the practice in. And that is the real big difference between a good and a great player. If you put the hours in, you're going to start winning big tournaments and winning big money. Well, and, well sorry to cool. interrupt you, Carl, but... Any of these British players, I'm saying British because we're at the UK Open here and we're in London, any of the British players that are looking at this at home, they're going, hang on a second, I can actually look at becoming a professional pool player because there's a future, there's more tournaments coming, what can I be doing now? They'll be looking at what qualifiers I can do next year, how do I get into the UK Open, how do I get onto the rankings, there's a Scottish Open now that I can play the week beforehand, you can actually turn their dream into reality. That's what we're trying to do with the World Nine Ball Tour. Yeah, and I've, I was just going to say then before you were you spoke, Emily, Philip Wildman has put Albion Ocean, one of the top ranked players on the tour, over to the loser's side. Philip Wildman, steady cuist, didn't really think he could beat Albion. You know, he's obviously second favourite, but obviously if there's more tournaments, they're the results we may see more often. Yeah, and obviously the young kid, I think he's from Finland. Walter Laker, is it? 14 years of 14 age. 14 years of age. I yeah, mean, he beat Tyler Steyer. Yeah, I mean, that's an unbelievable result. Tyler's one of the best players in America, you know, and he's won a fair few tournaments recently. So for that young kid of 14 years old, I mean... Yeah, that's a big result. That is unbelievable as somebody that age to be able to put performance in that he did. And, and I actually watched that match and... He was 8-6 up and missed a dead straight nine ball. Mm. And I thought, oh, this might get to him, young kid. You know, he shouldn't really be feeling the pressure at that age. But obviously, he believes in himself. You know, he's, he could have played in the, ju the junior event here and he chose to play in the senior event. That, to me, tells me that he's a very good player. Yeah, yeah. and after the match, did you see him sort of give it, right, to oh, Tyler? I loved that. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to that. see that. <laughs> he must have been watching Phil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before we go, uh, obviously, you've been on the World Snooker Tour yourself. You've had a, uh, a tour card. Have you spoke to Jack, Gary, David, anything? Have you have you seen them? What have they said about it? I spoke to David earlier. I spoke to Gary. I've known, known him quite well. I've only met Jack once. Uh, he gave me a good beating in the UK Open uh, in York many, many years ago. But, yeah, I mean, th they've got a lot of respect for the game. And I saw a comment on social media where Tony Drago actually commented and he said the reason he's won so many events is because he has respect for the game. He put the hours in. He put the work in. He travelled around. He won, I think he won the World Pool Masters. He won you know, quite a few tournaments and snooker players can't just come in and think that they're going to win. And I think the majority of them won't think that, but you're always going to get a few people that think, oh, it's easy, the pockets are massive. Well, if you think it's that easy, come and have a go. <laughs> there you go. We you challenge you, <laughs> come and have a go. It's not that easy. Well, you've heard it here first. The Magician's got a day off tomorrow. I'm sure we'll be back watching Chris on Centre Court. Emily, thanks for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow, 10am on the Matchroom Pool YouTube channel. Day two, UK Open.